Welcome back. Uh, we'll continue with our study of uh, vectors and tensors and actually finish up our study of vectors and tensors today. Specifically, what we're going to look at is the idea of uh, vectors, tensors, and scalars as well, but now as fields, okay? And I'll explain to you in just a minute what we mean by this. So let me write that down first. Okay, so, so here's, here's what we mean. Let's suppose we have vectors, say, alpha, beta, and so on. Okay, so we have those scalars. Uh, we have vectors, let's say, u, v, right? These belong to R3. And we have some scalars as well, right? So let's look at our standard symbol for scalars, a, b, Okay, and these belong, as we know, to that space. Okay, when we call them fields, what we mean is that we want to think of uh, alpha as being actually a function of position, okay, represented or, or parameterized by x and time t. Okay, and likewise for beta as well, right? And so on for any other scalar field. Likewise for vectors, right? So u is u parameterized by position and time and so on for any other vector. Likewise for our tensors. A is parameterized by position and time. Okay? So this is what makes them fields. They are spatial and, if you like, temporal fields as well. What this means, of course, is that now we can, since we can talk in, uh, of these um, scalars, vectors, and tensors varying over position and time, we can go ahead and compute derivatives, okay? So in particular, we can calculate uh, the simple time derivatives, okay? All right, and uh, we know, let, let's, let's start with scalars. We know how this works. This is fairly straightforward. We can define uh, partial of alpha with respect to time, okay? And by the dots, I mean we can go on to do the same thing for any other scalar, okay? This can be defined. Right, and we have a clear idea of what, what we may mean by this. Um, what kind of a scalar would we be interested in? Maybe we are interested in temperature. Right? As, function, as a function of position and time, if alpha were to represent temperature, um, you know, we would be set, right? We would, we would know how to calculate its time derivative, right? Uh, so let me say here, example, uh, alpha is the temperature. Okay? Um, all right, so, so we can do that for alpha, and what can we do now? Let's, let's go on now and ask what we can do for, for vectors, right? So, uh, recall for u, we have u written as ui ei, right? Now, the way we do this is to say that our basis vectors e, okay, we are going to say that they are independent of position and time, okay? So we are going to say the EIs are independent 
of x and t. All right. Okay. So what this means is that our vector u is going to be written as u of x comma t going to our coordinate representation what we are doing here is to put that dependence on position and time in the components of u relative to the basis whereas ei itself remains independent of position and time okay now what this really means is that we have a uh, an, an example of a basis that this does this sort of thing is a constant Cartesian basis. Okay, so we are going to say that, for example, E i is a constant. Okay, meaning fixed. I've used C-O-N-S-T-T -T as my abbreviation for constant, right? So E-I is a constant, meaning fixed, uh, Cartesian basis. All right. So now if we want to talk in terms of the time derivative of U, it becomes clear how to do it, right? All we need to do is talk about partial of ui with respect to time times ei. The sum over uh, index i, of course, is implied. Okay? So this is how we would write out the time derivative of a vector. And the same thing for tensors as well. Right? So uh, likewise, for tensors, Okay, so we are going to write A and we recall that we want to have it be a function of position x and time t and we are going to put that dependence on x and t in the components of Ai, right, the components Ai with respect, sorry, this would have to be Aij now because it's a tensor, right? So. Uh, Aij are the components relative to the basis, okay? And in particular, what we are using here is this ability to represent a tensor using our tensor product notation, right? And that's what allows us to bring in our tensor components, Aij, multiply them by that tensor product, Ei uh, tensor Ej, and the sum is implied over i and j. Okay, and therefore now when we talk about the time derivative, it's clear how to do it. Since our basis vectors are fixed, the, the quantity that's varying here is always the components, right? The components of the vector u or of the tensor a, okay? So this, this uh, way of writing things out by, by saying that the basis stays fixed with respect to position and time allows us to define definitely the time derivative in a very simple fashion. As you may imagine, the same thing carries over now to uh, derivatives with respect to space.